must say, I got into the club very early on. Yeah. I'm still in the club. Uh-huh. I still meet on a regular basis with some of the people. Uh, we used to have what we called a secret circle, and there was about 10 of us from okay. different offices that met and just kicked up our heels and had cocktails and just talked about real estate, and we always focused on the good old days because to me, back when we didn't have all of this technology and all of the computers and fax machines and lock boxes, it was a better way of doing business. Mm-hmm. There was a time when you never faxed over an offer. If you wanted to sell a house, you had to look the seller eye to eye at his dining room table, present yourself, present your contract, and present your people. Yeah, It's just so different now. It, mm-hmm. it, it's scary. But... Those of us that went through that time still kind of have a little bit of a, a bond because yeah. we know where we, what we've been through and where we are now. Mm-hmm. So we're, that, yeah, we're very friendly competitors, mm-hmm. but I will say this: that's only in the Oak Park area. I think it's the I think it's the Oak Park Board of Realtors that treat each other that way because I function outside of our board and it's not the same. Like mm-hmm. I can call people from other offices today to say I'm working on this property, I'm having a hard time pricing it. Can I run some ideas by you? And we'll spend five or ten minutes trying to figure out how to price my listing mm-hmm. that they eventually one day might sell. But it's a very good camaraderie that I don't think you'll see it in other areas. And, and I said this earlier, I would not have been as successful as I was if it were not for working in this market and in this board. People who say, I want to live west of Richland. Mm-hmm. Richland kind of seems to be this dividing line for mm-hmm. certain buyers. Did you hear that a lot in, in your, or have you heard that a lot in your career? So early on, I used to hear it all the time. Yeah. And I used to live on Austin Avenue. So mm-hmm. I was a good example to say to people, I lived on Austin. I mean, it was never a problem. It was no different. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you've got small kids, I would not recommend Austin, which is why I moved up Austin, because the kids were too small to play out front. Yeah, so, so it's a high traffic area. Completely, completely. Mm-hmm. So I think... I heard it a lot back in the day. I was able to overcome that just because of my my Austin roots. Yeah. But I don't hear that as much anymore now. Mm -hmm. And another observation that I've had in selling homes in every school district is that once somebody is in a school district, Mm -hmm. they become rabid fans. Absolutely. And if you move into the Longfellow district. They won't move out. You, you know, it's like you're going to move, but you have to stay in the district. In. And mm-hmm. it, it's it's across the board, every school. Absolutely. And um, do you feel that Oak Park is a more challenging sell with the tax burden that has gone up by 130% since 2000? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're have, we're, we struggled a lot this year. We, as in the Oak Park Board of Realtors, most of us only do our business here, Oak Park, River Forest, Forest Park. We try to go to communities. Yeah. We will go to Gale, we'll live in Berwyn, and wherever a buyer really wants us to go, but this is our focus. Yeah. And I have been to countless meetings. I've hosted countless meetings. Well, what are we gonna do about the taxes? What are we gonna do about our properties? What are we gonna do about our values? Now, I will say this, that people felt if the schools are at their A game, at the top, and I've got two kids, they can do the math real quick and figure out, okay, so I can stay in the city and I can go to private school, $15,000, $20,000 a year, $40,000, or I can buy this home, it's $30,000, but I want to see some test scores that's going to impress me. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll spend another five or $6,000 and I'll stay in the city and I'll you know, have a school that makes sense for me and my family. And, or I'll go further west, but I think it's the taxes that's the first thing that everybody's looking at. It's a heck of a lot easier to have uh, better test scores in that environment. Yes. Um, and you know, you also have a homogenous school that uh, you know doesn't give you what Oak Park schools exactly. offer. And I think people are a little bit short-sighted when they don't factor that into their calculus. I think so too, because I think there still isn't any other place, it's, at least in the state of Illinois, that looks like and feels like Oak Park. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get this close to the city. You're not going to get the diversity. And, and right now, with the restaurants in the bustling downtown area, the diversity in the housing stock, you're just not going to get that anywhere else. So there's still a lot of diehard people, both locally, like within the city, and out of state, who will still always choose Oak Park. Yeah. I will stand in 
anybody's face and tell them that I don't think my kids would be as successful as they are if they had not grown up here in Oak Park. Yeah. Uh -huh. so I think overall the takeaway would be it, it's a great place to live. We just need to lower the taxes a little bit. Yeah.